Okay, so that's just a brief overview. And then just one final thing. And I want you to mention this one story is that obviously Muslim history is replete with stories of people who would go journey into Munawwara and ask the Prophet to make dua for them. And some had experiences from a distance as well. But there's one scholar, Sheikh Abdul Haikatani, uh, and I want you to mention him. The reason why is that because uh, he died in 1960s, I think, in France, with those from Morocco, a great scholar of, of uh, hadith. And the reason why is that he, he, he has a son, who, Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Katani, who's in his 90s now. And uh, his, when he was young, his, uh, he, he got his son to meet many scholars. So what happens now is, is that they took Sheikh Abdul Katani, who we want to talk about, they, take, they took his son to Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, to read Sayyid Bukhari. The Salafis organized it, not the Sufis. The Sufis are doing other things. So they took him all the way to Riyadh. Alhamdulillah, managed to meet him in Mecca via someone, on him, him on his way to Riyadh. And many people go to him for, for his ijazah in hadith because he has a very, he, I mean, he, he's in his 90s. He, I think he remembers meeting people that, you know, he's, when he was nine, like 10 years old, it was a different world then. He remembers meeting all these different people. Um, and he, so, He's from that background where people are going to him to get ijazah from him and read hadith with him. Although his, he takes from his father. What does his father say about Medina from Munawwara? This is what his father said to someone. He said, when I was in Egypt last year, this is obviously 1930s, 1940s, heading towards the Hijaz for Hajj to Allah's sacred house and visitation of the most noble prophet upon him, salutation, salutation and peace. I heard that in Awara, there was a volume of Musnad of Adarami. We already talked about Adarami, it's a hadith book. There was a volume of the Musnad of Adarami, so I longed to see this book and hoped to own it, such that I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, my being a guest of yours is that you gift this book such that I own it. He's not in Medina yet, he's outside Medina. I said this a number of times whilst heading towards Medina. O oh, Messenger of Allah, my being a guest of yours is that you gift this book to me. Very direct du'a there to the Prophet I said this a number of times whilst heading towards Medina. When we reached near it, near it, some of its residents came out to welcome the visitors. So I assume in the past they'd have hotels. People would take people and put them in their houses. So they'd come out to the edge of Medina and take them to their house. Do oh, you need somewhere to stay? Yes, come with me. So uh, when we reached near it, some of the residents came out to welcome the visitors. The first person to meet me was a man who owned this book, who was from the people of Tunis, who had taken up residence in Medina from a long time. He greeted me, he greeted and welcomed me, and accompanied me till we entered Medina. Before we reached the Haram al Nabawi, he said to me, Come rest a little in my home, then we will go for visitation, meaning visit the Prophet. So I went with him to his home. With my mere entering, he passed me a book and said, Take this book from me as a gift to you, for it is not befitting except for you. I looked at it and, and found it to be the copy of the Busnad of Adarni, which I had asked from the Messenger of Allah. I felt such happiness which I cannot describe, but I forbade myself from looking into it, meaning looking at the book, and despite my intense longing to, until I had visited the Messenger of Allah, who had gifted it to me. That's the wording he uses. After the visitation, we see Allah is making everything happen. Well, obviously, it's come by the Messenger of Allah. After the visitation, I read it, and it was and it was as it had reached me the handwriting of Hafiz al Mundari, along with many hearing Samat and the handwriting of Swalik amongst them Hafiz Sakhawi. So that's one example of, and you can find one example of many, many of scholars. Were they, did they commit disbelief or kufr from this? According to the Salafi Wahhabi school, yes, they did. And Shaykh Abdul Haikatani now, people going to his son, kissing his hand, his son's hand. Obviously, his son accepts this, I'm sure. If I didn't accept it, I assume. But there you go, how times change. Okay, and but this is this is rampant with many other things as well. But that's just I want one example of many that you can find in Islamic history. 
of scholars and righteous God fearing scholars. So that's why that's why I wanted to mention, inshallah, and that's hopefully that's enough for just to give a brief overview of this topic. And you, this is one of the topics where there's a, the biggest difference between the Salafi school and the Sunni school. And so inshallah from, from that you could take when you visit Medina Munawwara, obviously seek that time to it's, Request the wealth from the Prophet Sallallahu Obviously the, the hadith of the blind man to, 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 naf, to nafal Use that du'a as well It's in the adhkar of Malnawi which has been translated You can use that without any kind of doubt that is shirk as well And just to clarify some misconceptions that people have uh, They seem to think it's a massive difference of opinion But actually it is weighted very heavily in the, in the side of Sunni scholars InshaAllah InshaAllah so we pause there Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen